When you're thinking about becoming an academy, one of your main concerns will obviously be staffing. We expect our teachers to be here till half past four every night apart from Friday. Now, half past four is not late. Most teachers are here till seven o'clock, eight o'clock at night, and they are in most schools, so it's no different to anywhere else, to be honest. You can do things differently. You don't have to follow teachers' paying conditions, but to run a, um, a good school, you would obviously only ask, I mean you still have to make reasonable requests of staff so you can't expect them to work you know 15 hours a day or something. What I would share with with heads who are considering becoming an academy in terms of staffing we have benefited greatly from having staff who um, are able and willing to work a longer day and a longer year. I think it's a good reason to want to become an academy. Again, you're always operating within reasonable requests of staff. But I think it is quite a restriction for a head having to be counting hours, and we don't feel we have to do that. If people aren't cut out for teaching, they should, they, you know, if they don't want to work long hours, they shouldn't do teaching, as simple as that, really. But uh, there's nothing to worry about it, because people aren't... It's not a, a, you know, a place where teachers are sort of worked to the bone, you know, it doesn't happen like that. It's just, it's an enjoyable place to work. Academies are no different to most schools, really. I think most staff want to do the best for the children. They want to do the best for the students, and therefore nobody, given a reasonable request, will refuse to do it. And I think most staff see the benefit of working a slightly longer day. Certainly we see that in, in terms of the children's progress and how well they've done, because we have more time at school. And that's more time with the children. That's not time just having meetings after school. Um, that's sort of pupil-facing time. But also, I have seen tremendous growth and development amongst my staff because of the emphasis we place on, on teacher development time. We ask staff to, to teach uh, a 30-hour teaching week, which is longer than the average. But a lot of staff do a great deal more than that, run extension programmes, enrichment programmes, they come in on Saturday mornings to help and support children. They do that because they want to and they have the best interests of the students at heart. But they also would expect in the fullness of time to be rewarded and promoted and that's what we do here. If you want to work in a school which is successful, then you've got to play your part. And we do work with targets and we do expect teachers to hit their targets and we'll find every possible way to support them to make sure they get there. But when there's somebody who isn't performing and, they, and for whatever reason you can't get them to perform with support to the level you want to, them to perform, in a county school it's always very difficult to get somebody to back you up totally. So as a head teacher you felt a bit exposed because the pressure was being put on you to, to not go the, the whole mile and sort of discipline them or take them down the capability route. Whereas in an academy, uh, standards are really, really high, really important. If somebody isn't performing, your standards are going to dip. And so the support is there instantly. Because the governing body is, is, is your, your little boss, really, you can get things in place straight away. Our salaries are very competitive, simply because we retain that money that normally goes to the local education authority, what's called holdback funding. We use that to recruit, but also to retain staff. We were a school which was in special measures in 2006 and it has been difficult in the past to recruit and retain staff. An outstanding school might not have that same problem, although in some areas of London it is more difficult to recruit. But being able to pay outside the teachers' paying conditions has probably been very helpful in recruiting staff. Most academy groups do sort of tend to follow uh, the national paying conditions, which may change in the future, but it works out quite well. But you are allowed to pay teachers more. Uh, the Harris Federation for a start does pay a, a Harris bonus for most teachers. But you can pay different pay scales as well, different bonuses, different honorariums if you wish. Our staff have a 2.5% uplift on salary to reflect the longer or the, the greater expectations we have. Um, but proportionately that isn't very much money you know, for the hours and the, the, the dedication that they show. The bonuses that we give at the end of the year, um, which we're allowed to do because we're an independent school, is very helpful and much appreciated by our staff. And there'd be no worries about having a different contract to the local education authority contract. Our teachers also get an attendance uh, allowance um, and they also get a, a, like a slight bonus for exam performance, so you're allowed to do that as well, which is a small amount of money. With Harris uh, schools, uh, we also get 20% off uh, carpet ride carpets as well, <laughs> which is a bonus of the sponsor, uh, which does appeal to some people. <laughs> I think teachers unions are worried because they think people will take advantage of teachers but in reality I, I don't think that will happen. The unions have been very involved in, in, in working with academy providers making sure that the, the teachers that we employ their terms and conditions 
match the, the terms and conditions of, of local authority teachers. And we've been certainly very open about that and, and open about the differences that we have. And the differences largely are hours, weeks, and the small increase in pay. There's no reason why unions should worry about this. If they have uh, the interests of their, of their members at heart, they should want them to have better conditions of service, and that's what we're offering them. The union should support it because this, nobody's going to undermine teachers. Teachers aren't going to work in schools if, they, if, if um, you know, it's the bad conditions. You know? So why are people applying for jobs there if it's so bad? So it doesn't make any sense, really. I think the unions need to get into academies and understand how they operate. I would reassure other heads who are worried about staffing and how they would view being an academy because the reality is most staff are very happy working within academies and in fact get better paying conditions than they would otherwise. People sitting in offices at the town hall or in Whitehall do not improve schools and academies are about investing in the people who do make the difference. <laughs>